I think we can all suggest that there are better sites. This is a site that was selected and that has been in the permitting for a couple of years. In response to your question, we all can do better. In what way? How about Holyoke? <laughs> in what way can we do better with this site? How about the property that's for sale up here on Meadow Street uh, in, in uh, North Amherst that is owned for this type of thing? A um, little bit of an unfair question because I haven't looked at it. I know there was a lot of litigation on that site over floodplain and over um, the it's Rivers floodplain. Act and all. I have no idea what the outcome of that is. There are, there are um, many sites that you could suggest. I will tell you that, and I think this number is correct, uh, five colleges has spent somewhere but in excess of 50,000 and less than 100, I believe, in investigating sites and getting options, drilling, seeing if it would hold all of the work that goes into picking a site. They have done a significant amount of work to do that. Um, probably somewhere in this area there might be a better site. But what's before you this evening is this site, this building, with modifications if, if people come up with some reasonable modifications. This site, this building, um, and I think, in fairness, we're really focused on this huge building, but yet, if we can believe what the architect is showing us, yes, it's 111, 112,000 square foot building with 46 parking spaces, but the visibility from North Maple Street, as I drive down it, is going to be almost non-existent. I'm going to have to crane my neck at Rocky Hill Road to see it. So the people who we are trying to take care of are the neighbors who might see it, and we've shown what that impact would be. And to me, that impact is minimal. Other questions from the board? <coughs> Hearing none. Okay, we're going to open up to the audience. But to keep a lot of people here, we've got about an hour before 9 o'clock. I don't want to let this meeting run beyond 9 o'clock. So we'll ask you to keep your comments or questions to two minutes and as you notice Peter McConnell likes to talk um, I'm going to ask Peter to keep his replies to one minute or less so that we can all have a chance to hear what you have to say and not drag out long stories okay ma'am hi I'm uh, Melissa Aloisi 107 Rockville Road and it's mainly a question for the board about a clarification on this Dover amendment and in regards to taxes to the town. So if they weren't under this amendment, would the town be able to get taxes? And what kind of taxes are going to go to this town? Um, my concern being strictly concern of, of police and fire. The, uh, tax, added. the tax exempt status is separate from the Dover Amendment. Okay. The Dover Amendment is what lets them build something in a zone that is not otherwise, uh, does not otherwise permit it. Their tax exempt, real estate tax exempt status comes from a different section of state law completely. Okay. So, um, yes, they would be exempt under any circumstances as long as it is in some way related to the function of the institution. Amherst College is largely exempt, but it's also the largest taxpayer in Amherst because all of the faculty housing it owns is not tax exempt. <coughs> But this would be tax exempt in, every, in any instance. So that's my concern. Like I'm not hearing any form of income that's going to compensate for the added fire, safety, police, water, things that's like correct. that. Like that's I, I just want to know where that's going to come from. Your pocket and mine and the tax yeah. that are collected from anybody else. That's correct. And I, I did not see any type of landscaping effort at all, which was something that the town that this forum had asked for. And to put that in perspective, the, the property has been under Chapter 61A for the last seven years, which is a, so it's been paying a very limited tax up until now. Um, and I didn't look it up, but it's probably, the bill may be able to correct me, it's probably hundreds of dollars, not thousands a year under 61A. But what would a building of that size, if it were business, produce for our town? Like if it were a business, like just, is it any way? I, I don't know, depending what the value would be, but based on a tax rate of $9 per thousand, it was a million dollar building, probably the order of, was that $90,000? But 
But that would be a full-time paid staff person. There's something like, you know, that would be a regular building in a business, and I mean, in, in a appropriate zone that would be taxable. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, can I ask a question? You referred to five colleges as a not-for-profit organization. Is that incorrect? Yeah, that's correct. It's not a non-profit. That's, that's the same thing. No, they're not the same thing. Legally, they're not the same thing. Well, I guess I'm... But the Dover Amendment applies to non-profit education no. employers. I have this right in front of you. The Dover Amendment, like Mr. Dwyer said, applies to educational uses. The I non in front of me. It says nonprofit educational corporation. I have no idea what you're referring to. I I have a section of the Dover. Five Colleges Inc. is a nonprofit. Is it a nonprofit or is it a not for profit? Because they're not the same. <coughs> The documents were filed with you at before the first hearing. Yep. Um, I will see if I have the documents. I think they were filed under Chapter 180, which is all that matters. Okay, right on your application. Well, Actually, let's just leave that alone. We'll, we'll leave that alone because our town council has said they qualify. Yeah. See? Yeah. yeah, right there. It's a private nonprofit corporation. Okay. Can I finish uh, my question? Sure. Um, next, I, I'm not sure if anybody's aware, but Senate Bill 24 has been filed to review the Dover Amendment because of the potential for misapplication of it. And that's currently pending in the Senate. And then third, I had a question for um, the builders here. You reduced the size of the building, but you haven't reduced the size of the road around it. So you're leaving space for that last fifth piece. Why is that? Why? Did you say why? Yeah. Partly because, partly because that's what was approved by the other regulatory agencies that we showed it to. You don't have room to put space, to put trees up. We have room to put trees up. You told us at the last yeah. meeting that we there's need no to be room to put screen we, and tree. What we told you was we need to be sensitive to the habitat that we're trying to create. And part of creating that habitat is to remove some of the invasive species and the invasive plants, and we intend to do that. Um, therefore, we would Rather, we can go back and say, yes, some maple trees will make a difference. When we looked at it and looked at the views that come from all of the neighborhoods, it didn't appear to us that putting a row of maple trees along it would help. If the board thinks that's going to solve the problem, you know, we'd go back to the uh, Mesa and to Natural Heritage and to the CONCOM and say, sure, we're going to plant 27 maple trees. But I don't think that's really the issue here. And that if I, if I were to tell you tonight we'll plant 27 maple trees, I don't think you'd stand up and say, fine, we'll support it. I would certainly be more in support of it okay. than I currently right. am because I'm the guy looking down from Rocky Hill Road on the top of this ugly building. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be looking at it forever. And I didn't buy here for, for this to happen. Certainly. I can't control what happens to this land, but... It's got to be a better use than well, we've asked what you're currently proposing. You can't control, but we've asked for input. Okay. Next question. Anybody else? Yes. Um, Peter, uh, the board is, um, I've read in the newspaper is that Joyce Chungle, of course, yeah. looking, that you're leaving room for expansion, and is there going to be an expansion to this, to this uh, building or not? Uh, we don't believe so. Uh, what we showed you was the last time was all the, the plans off into the future called for. We are willing to say no. We'll back that up 20%. If 15 years from now somebody from five colleges comes in here and says, uh, gee, we need more storage facility, we want to put on another module, I can't say that would never happen, but it is not in our place. So, Joyce, what's so happening is that we're permitting, at our request, they are showing, they're permitting a, a build out. They're not going to be putting up 100,000 square feet now. It's only going to be 
36,000. 36,000 to start with. But we're requiring that they do the design for all the drainage they will need for the entire project if it ever gets built. So the entire project would then would be 112,000 square, square feet. One of the things we didn't do this, you know, is we didn't really go back and say, okay, we can make our detention basin a little smaller, because frankly, the soil, the, a lot of the rainwater runs off anyways. It's, it's pretty dense. So we decided we'd just leave it the size it is, and it will just function better than what's, re what's required. So the drainage was not changed for the size of the building. Um, the only thing that we changed was the parking and the size of the building. Next question. Yes, ma'am. I'm Lindsay St. Lawrence from 16 Rocky Hill Road. So we're directly across from the field where um, there's going to be that, path, um, <coughs> I guess, a fence. Um, the building, okay, it's a little further away, but I'm more concerned about the fence because that's literally right across from our house. So what's that going to look like? Well, to be very honest with you, we haven't planned it. There are a couple of things that we have not shown because they're not planned. They'll be back before, if the board were to grant us permission to do this, we would come back with a couple of things. One is going to be a very small sign that says Five College Library Annex, so that people would know where it is. The board could say yes or no to that. But more importantly, what, what there's going to be is a gate on right. your end. And there is also going to be probably a small sign that will say, and we're not proposing this, so it might, I mean, we could come in here and they'd say no. It would probably say something about the walking trails and that the area is closed after dark. Uh, but we're not, we are not trying to encourage people to come there, but we are um, making it available to, we can't distinguish between you on Rocky Hill Road and some of the meadows. Right. But I mean, well, okay, so what I picture would be like a chain link fence, cause, but. What, what fence are we talking about? We haven't shown on Rocky fence. Hill. We, the, there was discussion last time, I think Dr. Zagrodnik thinks it's perhaps a second egress. Um, we have not planned that, but there is a, it's a farm road, sort of. What is it that goes in there? Well, in fact, there's Arnold, no road. Mark Arnold, I thought, took that off the table. He does not want that to be the exit. That's no, we, right. we don't. Yeah. We're not proposing Not that. the exit. But She's concerned about us putting up a gate to block it, correct? When I went to the meeting, at your place, mm -hmm. there was discussion about uh, like an emergency vehicle entry, and there'd be a fence there. We this was like last week. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that little I was, piece. It's the little piece off of Rocky yeah, Hill. Yeah, yeah, you were there. Yeah, this so, guy. This guy right here, right? Yeah. Yep, there's supposed to be a fence there. Yeah. There was there was talk of putting up a fence, like you said, with a gate and possible signs saying it's open yes. to the public for trails but not at night mm -hmm. and yes the the whole emergency access thing i believe has been tabled um, no yeah. if i may the the question for natural heritage was would they allow an emergency right of way through there if the fire marshal or public safety wanted it so in our uh, requests for permits under the conservation restriction and so forth. Uh, we asked them to allow that. We haven't heard from any of the public safety folks that that would be needed. If it were, that would involve clearing a thicket of sumac. Uh, in fact, one of the neighbors already has cleared part of that sumac thicket uh, adjacent to his property. And so, in order to restrict the public access, which is required for the conservation restriction, uh, where it might be possible to enter, we would like to have a sign that says who may enter and for what purpose. And if it's a wide open uh, pathway for a vehicle, then something like a split barrel fence and a, a gate might be required, but we don't presently have any request or requirement. The letter that. that came from the fire chief does not request yeah. that. He is, it is his opinion that the area for him to turn his trucks and to drive around and go in and out is sufficient, and he has not asked for that. So we're certainly not going to build it unless somebody tells us to. It was also represented to us that, see, you have natural heritage that doesn't want you to go up here. Conservation Commission doesn't want you to be crossing wetlands if there's any other way to get out. Conservation so, Commission has approved the plan. They've approved this plan. 
That's correct. On the basis that this has been denied. Okay, that may that may be. That's what Janice Stone told me. Yeah. But what I heard from the board last hearing and from the public was, we do not want anything coming out here. And so neither do we. Uh, there may be an access trail for walking, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, but it is, and there may be a sign because we want to make sure that people understand that it is not available after dark. Um, but to the best of my, if we, we are before the board for site plan approval, if the board were to grant it, and we wanted to change that in some way by putting a gate, a fence, whatever, we would have to come back. I, I honestly don't think you want anybody going into the property from North Maple Street because they're going to meet from, from, from Rocky, Rocky Hill, Hill Road. Because if you put that, any kind of a sign up there that says this is a conservation area, open days, closed at night, people are going to be parking on Rocky Hill Road mm -hmm. because there's no place to park. Mm -hmm. Okay, my my opinion: if you're going to open this for conservation, and people are going to be parking, they need to park on the five college property, mm -hmm. okay, and use it yep. because otherwise, going to be parking on Rocky Hill Road, and it's not exactly the widest road in town, and it's certainly not the safest either. There's a lot of blind corners. We we can resolve that issue. <laughs> <laughs> Unintended consequences of something like this, you're going to get four wheelers and motorbikes in their motorcycles. So, if we do, we'll be back looking for a gate. Yeah. Um, right now, there's a little bit of, I shouldn't say a little bit because I don't really know, use by some of the uh, college students. I think the police were there a few weeks ago to clear out a pretty big gathering. We, we will have the obligation of policing that. And, you know, under the conservation restriction, we can't, I don't believe, just say, okay, these houses have access to it, who have been using it all along now, that it has to be public. How much we have to demonstrate that, I'm not sure. But we're certainly not looking to publish throughout the state that this is a great walking area. Not we do not want to prevent the neighborhood from I don't think it's big enough to be a great walking area. Pardon me? I don't think it's big enough to be a great walking area. No, but we, we want to make sure that the neighbors aren't restricted from using it. They use it now to some extent. And uh, that's okay. Next question. Somebody else? Yeah. No, you've already spoken once. Oh. <laughs> Wait till everybody else. We're going to keep, keep, keep going here. Yes. I have a question. Uh, I'm Kathy Salvatore from 4 Mill Valley Road in Hadley. Um, sorry, I didn't go to the other meetings. Um, you had mentioned earlier, sir, that uh, you checked out the, the, the builders had checked out other sites, um, lots of other sites. My question is, with their five colleges, all of the colleges around are bringing in big buku bucks, and they do have lots of property. Why Hadley and not University of Mass properties up on a hill? way up near West Street, way out near Puffer's Pond, where the old coal mill uh, where, with lots of land is available and is not being utilized. There are a lot of other places, I, I'm sure Hampshire College, with lots of buku, uh properties and not a lot of surrounding neighborhoods and, uh, and uh, you know, neighbors uh, having to worry about a building. Why have it? The this is the result of a fairly long search for land. I can't tell you why this one, except that it meets the needs of being centrally located to the five colleges, having ready access to the five colleges, sort of support the weight of the building. I'm not an engineer, so I really can't say. And, and I can say they looked and looked. Obviously, they didn't say, hey, let's come to Hadley and have a fight. Um, they. Um, look for what they thought was the most suitable um, and hope that we can work with the citizens to produce something that is uh, uh, amenable to people. I know it's not going to be absolutely perfect. We all like the open space better, but it's something that um, they looked and this is what they thought was the best alternative. Okay. Uh, nice Rocky Hill Road, uh, uh, like age 55 community could come in or other uh, another, um, let's say, circle neighborhood could come in and have a couple more houses there, and you can see our beautiful valley. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and, and overlook the Home Depot and our great Route 9 that, that's being developed and all that. So it's like... But you might get tax for you. Well, whatever. <clears throat> but that's Hadley. And Hadley is progressing, so... Next question. Yes, sir. Jamie McKenna, I live in the corner of uh, Kenfield and High Meadow. Um, you said that Five College is all about lessening the duplication between the colleges and everything else. Don't, does the, uh, the university or the Amherst College have a facility up at Military Drive just for this purpose? It's full. And they can't expand that in any way, shape, or form? It's underground. I don't. I, I, well, if there's open space, I, I, I don't know for certain if there's open space. I don't have an answer. I don't know whether there's open space. I don't know whether it's buildable. I know nothing about that. Okay. And the second question on that same vein is why are we putting two conference rooms in here when there's conference rooms in Every university campus. There's multiple conference rooms. You, um, you sure that just wasn't so it would be educational? I don't think it. I mean, my per, my view of it is it has, the conference room has nothing to do with the educational use. The library annex and the storage of books is what is educational. And I'm pretty certain that you would read the your council's letter the way I did that it is not based on those conference rooms. Okay. Yeah. Just talking yeah. about legal, legal opinions. Is anybody unable to hire an, another attorney and get an independent legal opinion on this bill? Can, may citizens do that? I'm just curious. If, if they had wanted to, they could have. Okay. There is no prohibition on hiring your own lawyer. I was quite dumb on my. Yeah. So there were a couple other questions that other people asked, and you didn't have the answers for. Um, and you said basically, in, I feel as though we're being kind of bullied here into this. Um, that. We're abiding by the law. Everything is in conjunction with the law. Much like Mr. Potter from It's a Wonderful Life, and I didn't move to have you live in Potter. Uh, I'm not familiar with the reference, I'm sorry. Thank wonderful you. Life? Mr. Mm -hmm. Potter? Don't know the guy. Uh, he's, he's a bad guy. Okay. The, what I have said is that the statute provides for this in any town, in any where in the Commonwealth. And we did not wish to void. And that's why they're here before you, or sorry, before you now, is because one of the ways to do it is just apply for a building court, a building permit. If you deny, go straight to court for an education use. Or not straight, you make a short stop at the ZBA. We didn't want to do that. Uh, came here to get the input of the board, and hopefully their blessing, and to hear the concerns of the neighbors. We've addressed some of them. We have not addressed them all, obviously, to your satisfaction. But I don't think you can belittle a 20% reduction in size. And the, the, the color is no concession. I don't want to say it is. We'll paint it any color that anybody wants because we don't think it's visible. But I think the 20% reduction in space um, for this is a significant reduction. If it went down another eight or 10,000, would that make anybody happy? I don't think that's the issue. Uh, but I want to be very clear that the schools, the five colleges, are not trying to bully anybody. They're trying to build a library annex that will service the schools that we all either work at, get business from, whatever we do. I, I'm, a, I'm a graduate of the university okay. myself. And yeah. Jumping on her, actually, her question was going to be mine as well. I believe the colleges probably own well over a thousand acres in this area. And I'm sure that they can come up with a better position. Um, I can assure you that we didn't decide we just want to fight. But the colleges may be lazy. They may be what? They may be lazy. It's probably it's, why they formed five it, colleges. Yeah, right? it's easy to suggest things like this if they really don't look at what the options are. And I think there are a lot of other options out there. And they, and they said that how we can just buy it, pay a broker. By the way, I'd like to get the broker in here to ask him which other properties are brokers, which other properties were looked at. There's because you keep talking about other properties that were looked at. I'd, I'd like to see what they were. It's part of the public record, isn't it? I, I, it. I, I can certainly get that for yeah. you, but, I, but in all, with all due respect, it's not relevant to whether or not this is an appropriate or a, uh, an allowed use on the lot. Um, I'm happy to, to provide any information that, that the board wants, but I, I'm not sure that you can say, well, there's a better place in Cummington, so we're going to turn this down. I think you can look at it for other reasons, say, oh, we're going to turn it down and we'll have our, our fun. But um, I think that it is not 
within that box, it's not relevant that there's a better place somewhere else. I got an e email from Biddy Martin, who's the president of Amherst College and also serves as the president of the board of directors of the Five College Inc. Correct. Saying she was aware that there were problems with uh, book storage for all the five colleges, and she knew that UMass and, in particular, Smith had a problem because Smith is going to be renovating their library and they have to put the books someplace. But she wasn't aware of this particular property uh, being in play, but she would get up to speed on it. Hmm. Has she called you? No. Uh, so the question is, if the, if the president of the board of directors doesn't know what's going on, who really knows what's going on? Who, who knows how much work has actually been done in finding an alternative site? Who knows? Well, Neil knows. Uh, but whether each member of that board is there for every discussion, I think it's like the board of any big organization. We make these big 30,000 foot decisions that we need this and, and task somebody to go do it, somebody who they are an owner of, a part of, and, and are, and that's what, that's what they've done. I would hope that Five Colleges Inc. goes back to the board of uh, directors and tell them that Halley has a real problem with this development. And then if they're not aware of it, they should probably become aware of it because this is an issue. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ariana Sarsinski, Chandler Drive. I'm not a neighbor, but I'm a, um, I live in Hamlin. And uh, my questions are, uh, why we around we have towns um, who's, um, um, uh, you see that uh, they are more ur urban. So, uh, sorry about my English. I'm going to try to do my best. Uh, their field, their, the way they are built, and, and it's more, much more urban. Why? Uh, it's, this is the question. Why uh, uh, do they decide to come to have which? We are all proud and, and you know, that it's a farming land and this is a quiet place. Why did you decide to put a bunker in the middle of the beauty we have here? That's my first question. The second question, what could be most important that preserves, preserves lands like the one we have? I would have a, a problem explaining that to my students now that the philosophy of education goes to let them understand the importance of preserving uh, the, the natural resources. I would have a real problem explaining how I'm, I'm going to spread concrete over those the lands in having. And my third question is, how can the book be so important now that technology addresses all, uh, it's a, the most important, important resource for students in order to get uh, the information they need, uh, it's technology, I'm talking about uh, computers and, and the web. Uh, why it's been so important to me. I don't know what kind of books, but I don't, I don't think that the, those are things that have that have information that you can't find on the web. And, mm -hmm. and another thing, how many designs did you consider? Did you ever consider to have a not a bunker, but a more friendly design with the, with the, uh, that show would show the citizens we care about you and we care about your heritage because many people here they are the sons, the daughters, the grandsons, and grand grandsons of farmers, and that should be taken consideration in my opinion. Uh, and storage in books, I'm not a designer, I'm just an industrial designer, can, can be done in many ways. Why you, didn't you plan to make a basement very well uh, 
be insulated and expand the money in, in, in make a, a, a great thing that you could go under the ground and make a beautiful park for the city. Uh, so, um, um, thank you. Thanks for your patience. I will try to answer them in reverse order if I can. Yes, um, and the first thank one I have to answer, I'm not a scholar, but those who are.